Welcome to our video class lessons for today. So, I'm going to discuss about cash collection budget. But before that, our learning title is preparing cash collection budget. And for our learning objective is to prepare cash collection budget. So, first, look at the picture. So, in business, kapag walang cash collection budget, katulad ito ng nasa picture na naghahabol ng pera na kung saan kapag hindi na collect ng tama ay hindi na babalik. Kaya, napaka-importante sa business na namamonitor ang cash and at the same time, the accounts receivable, which is ang mga pakutang. So, in this lesson, we use some terms. So, here, accounts receivable, cash collection, cash sales, and credit sales. So, pukisahan natin sa accounts receivable. So, pag sinabing accounts receivable, it is the balance of money due to a firm for goods or services delivered or used but not yet paid for by the customers. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung mga goods or services na nagamit na pero hindi pa nababayaran. So, next, cash sales. So, pag sinabi namang cash sales, it is the recovery of cash from the business or individual with which you have issued goods and services produced or purchased on credit. So, ibig sabihin, these are the goods and services na na-purchased on credit or mga inutang na kailangan natin i-collect. Nakuha po. So, ulitin ko. Ito yung mga goods and services na na-purchased on credit, mga inutang ng mga customers. So, as a business, kailangan natin yung mga yun na i-collect para hindi tayo malugis ng business. So, next is cash sales. So, when we say cash sales, are sales in which the payment obligation of the buyer is settled. So, ibig sabihin niyan, ito yung mga sales na binayaran on cash. So, sa kabalik na naman, sa credit sales, these are the purchase made by the customer for which payment is delayed. So, ibig sabihin, mayroong biniling product or good si customer per na sa business mo, pero hindi pa nababayaran. So, hindi po. So, for now, next is, I will demonstrate on how to prepare a cash collection budget. So here, sa cash collection budget, we use the, meron tayong sample sales budget na kung saan kukunin natin ang net sales to solve or compute the cash collection budget. So dito gagamitin natin yung total amount of net sales. So dito once we're on ready discuss this sales budget in our online class. So now, kukunin lang natin, kukunin lang natin yung amount or total amount ng net sales na gamitin natin para ma-solve or ma-compute ang cash sales or cash collection budget. So here, here's the tabular form or Excel na pwede natin gamitin in order to demonstrate the cash collection budget. So, kung napapansin nyo, quarter 1 is yellow, quarter 2 is orange, and quarter 3 is green, and quarter 4 is blue. Para madali natin ma-identify kung saan ang part na kailangan natin isolve. So, umpisa na natin. So, once na nailagay na natin, o nakuha na natin kung magkano or kaano ang amount ng net sales, next natin ay the cash sales. So, dito, we are giving an example of percentage na pwede natin magamit in order to solve the problem. So, dito, sa cash sales, meron tayong 20% of net sales. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong cash sales or meron tayong cash mismo na binayaran mismo ng mga customers on time na 20%. Sa quarter 1, sa quarter 2, quarter 3, and quarter 4. So, solve natin. 53,900 times point or point 0.2 or 20% is equals to 10,780. Next, sa quarter 2, 58,800 times 20% is equals to 11,760. Next is the quarter 3, which is 75,460 times 20%. So, meron tayong 15,000 pesos. Next, sa quarter 4, 86,240 
times 0.2 is equal to or 86,240 times 20% is equal to 17,248. So, dito, nag-automatic siya na ma ma total once naman tayo ng sale. So, next, proceed tayo sa collection on credit sales. Ito naman yung mga kautang na kailangan natin matingil sa mga customers. So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong 20% na cash sales or cash on hand. So, it means meron tayong 80% na credit sales yung mga pautang na hindi pa natin nakukuha as a cash. So, in order to solve this problem, use the percentage. So, 53,000 of net sales times 80% or 0.82 in decimal. So, meron tayong 43,120 pesos. So, sa quarter 2, on credit sales, meron tayong 80% of it. So, 58,800 times 0.8 or 0.8 or 80% is equal to 47,040 pesos. Next, sa quarter 3, meron tayong 75,460 of net sales and kailangan natin makuha yung 80% so 75,460 times 8% is equal to 60,368 pesos next, sa quarter 4 86,240 of net sales times 0.8 or 8% equals to 68,900 pesos. So, kapag na natin ang total amount in credit sales, proceed tayo doon sa mga assumptions. For example, we have assumptions here. Sa quarter 1, meron tayo credit sales na 30%. And then, 50% sa quarter 2, 10% sa quarter 3, and 10% sa quarter 4. So, sabi dito, merong 30% in quarter 1. So, yung 30%, ita times natin mismo, yung sa total amount of credit sales. 43,120 times 30% is equal to 12,936. So, yung sabi dito, 12,000. So, ibig sabihin, 30% sa quarter 1, so it means meron pang natitirang 70%. Nakawa? So, para makuha natin yung 70%, 70% times credit sales, which is 43,120. So, ulitin ko, 43,120 times 7% or 70%. So, meron tayong 30,184 pesos na makisingil sa quarter 2. So, how, how about the quarter 2, which is 50%? So, sa quarter 2, 50%, ganun trip na gawin natin, i-multiply natin ang percentage sa cash collection or collection on credit sales. Ayan. 47,040 pesos times 50% is equals to 23,520 pesos. So it means, for the following month, meron tayong masisingil na 50% ulit para makompeto natin yung kailangan natin makuhang amount. So, 47,040 pesos times 0.5 is equals to 23,000 Pesos. So, proceed tayo sa quarter 3, which is the uh, assumption natin meron tayong 10% in the quarter 3. 10% na makisingil sa quarter 3 sa credit sales. So, 60,368 times 10%, which is 60 or 6,000. 
thousand and thirty six point eight or eighty. Then we have one nothing value or amount sa quarter three. So how about the quarter four? Okay, ten percent. Ten percent yung nasa assumption natin sa quarter three. So we should tie sa pwede natin masimulit for the following month which is 90% so, remember, kailangan natin convert it na yung 100% lahat so, kung kanina, 10% ang matitingin natin kung nakukuha natin cash, ngayon naman kasunod ay 90% so, 10% plus 90% is equals to 100% so, 90% times 60,000 363 is equals to 54,331.20 ang makukuha natin yung amount sa quarter 3 so sa quarter 4 naman which is the last quarter of the month so meron tayong given na 10% so 10% of the quarter 4 credit sales which is 68,992 times 10% is equals to 68,000 or 6,899.2 or 20 dollars so from here we already solved the problem cash collection budget so kung nakapansin nyo para siyang stairs para pagdan Mas maligay ito talaga sa credit cash collection. So, yung 90% kanina doon sa quarter 4 ay hindi na natin ito solve. Bakit? Kasi yung quarter 4, 90% ay ikasama natin na mismo yun for the following year. So, in 2020, yung 90% na cash collection doon na natin ilalagay. So, here, pwede natin ma-solve or ma-total kapag ang sabot mo dito ay parehas sa total amount here hindi sabihin tama kasi hindi ito sa vertical pag tama or na-balance mo yan hindi sabihin tama ang sabot mo so therefore meron tayong meron tayong 376,947.20 na cash collection in 2019 or other known as account receivable for 2019 so i hope you understand the lesson and thank you for watching